We welcome everyone to meditation and whether you're with us live on Monday evening or listening to this recording at Preston Hospital or at West Preston Methodist Church on a Wednesday, you're very welcome and we're, we're glad that you're part of our little community. And this week I thought that with the ending of the COP climate meeting in Egypt and some progress on loss and damage payments to poor countries on the positive side, but at the same time conscious that progress still needed on reducing fossil fuel, fuel usage if we're going to keep 1.5 alive, which was the slogan after the Glasgow meeting. And I'm tying this in well, it might not seem an obvious connection first at first with the uh, sort of the work of the spirit, but just going back to Jesus and the and the early church, and just thinking that Jesus didn't organize a political party. He didn't really found a religion. He saw himself always as a Jew, but I think we can say that he began a movement fueled by the Spirit, a movement whose purpose was to, was to change people so that we go to a world as it might be rather than the world as it is. And so we, in this time, this space we've carved out for ourselves, invite you just to adjust your sitting position, bring your attention to where you are, rest in your hands, maybe forearms on your thighs, gently closing your eyes or using the image if that's helpful. Take two deep cleansing breaths. Bring your attention to that breath. Sense it filling you and then releasing. Maybe an image of the wave gently coming up the beach and then receding. Filling and emptying. Nothing attached to this breath, just the pure source of our energy, the wind, the breath of God, spirit. Try counting to four on the in-breath and hold for two and then five on the out-breath and another hold for two. life-giving breath 
animating. As a biologist, I think of this breath carrying into the body the atoms of oxygen. That breath, that air moves into the lungs, down into the tiniest capillaries. And there the oxygen in the breath, in the air, enters the bloodstream. The molecules of haemoglobin take up the oxygen and then it's carried, it's transported to all parts of the body. So the, the airway of life passes on to the river of life the bloodstream carrying its precious cargo of oxygen. Each time we breathe fresh oxygen moves down that river of life. And every minute, every second it's silently passed to each of our organs, to each of our cells, where in each one respiration takes place, providing us with the energy to keep us alive and thinking and doing but without us even aware of what's going on. Certainly a miracle of engineering. Maybe one for which we can just pause and give silent grateful thanks. Now some, one or two more thoughts on that idea of Jesus creating a movement, which initially, the first thing to say was called the way. So it was a way of life. The second remarkable thing is that those following the way of Jesus within their community as we read scripture, appear to have abolished poverty and hunger. Acts chapter 4 talks about their sharing everything. This abolition of poverty was one of the signs and wonders which became an invitation to others to follow the way. And thirdly, they acted together as a community with equal standing. They, of course, were the immediate recipients of the power of the Spirit given at Pentecost. But that spirit too gives us the power to challenge and cry for justice in the face of oppression. 
and to grow our own movement. We read that when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples, they were mocked, thought to have been drunk. Yet they carry a life-affirming message filled with a spirit that sustains them. In the early 1900s, a small revival in Los Angeles, the power of that Pentecostal revival wasn't so much the manifestation of speaking in tongues and healings, but in the miracle, especially at that time, of black and white people worshipping together, preaching together, decrying racism by their very presence in one place. And that same spirit still moves when we move past our prejudices and differences. And I actually think the England football team is a fine example of that when they all together, the diversity of the team just bending on one knee before the start of a game. So we're coming to another short period of silence. <clears throat> just thinking of the fact that the climate crisis does cause many people to be anxious. And as we come to this time of year especially, if we cannot go outside, well, let's go inside. And there is something about going inside or meditation that is resonating with more and more people. As is living in harmony with nature. So bring the attention back to the breath. And though it's dark and cold and wet outside, this is all part of nature. Maybe just try and listen to the sound of the rain. Or imagining the power of a swollen stream or river. Or notice what cold might look like. Might be frost on the ground. Ice on the pond. Hibernating animals. Or particularly poignant in our present circumstances of rising fuel prices, people huddled up in multiple layers, just notice any any thoughts that come to mind, any images there, and just try stepping back and noticing your own thinking, 
notice your own feeling. Mindfulness is being aware of our thoughts and our emotions, being able to observe them, accept them, and not to get caught up in them. Christian Climate Action is just one group of people concerned for the state of the planet. Many others exist, many of them bringing mindfulness, compassion, healing and non-violence to protect all beings and the earth. One such has four or five practices which they advocate. I'm just going to go through these and have a slight pause after each one to think about. So one element is cultivating a wise view so that our actions are grounded in spiritual depth Yes, things might not turn out exactly as we want, but we should remember that we and all things are connected. Cultivating a wise view. Secondly is to heal and transform racism, racial oppression and social oppression. Climate justice is very much linked to racial justice. Those poorer countries who have contributed least to the climate crisis are suffering the most impacts from it. So healing and transforming racial, racial and social oppression. And then healing again, healing despair, healing fear, healing feelings of powerlessness so that we can think more clearly, love more deeply. Many are anxious, if not terrified, by the prospect of climate disaster. And it's so easy, isn't it, to be sucked into the cycle of news and become almost paralysed. Or to go to the other extreme and distance oneself and become entirely passive. 
as people of faith, perhaps we can practice contemplation and action, the one leading to the other. Mindful awareness, noticing how we are feeling, noticing how we are reacting and accepting that without judgment, being your own observer. And then finally, for now, building a strong community so that we can together recover, refresh and renew ourselves. Even in the face of social unease and suffering, Nurturing the capacity for compassion, counteracting hatred, blame and othering. And so we move to our longer period of silence, perhaps carrying some of those thoughts, carrying some of those images you may have brought to mind, or simply returning to your breathing, maybe imagining the bloodstream as that river of life. We'll take this time of silence to set your intention for this week, for the animating spirit within us, to express joy and gratitude and compassion and love.
And so we come out of our silence. Maybe take another conscious deep breath. Become aware of your arms, your hands, your fingers. Just gently stretch. Gently open your eyes. You just move the neck. Bringing your attention back to the room. Keeping contact with that spirit within. And a closing prayer. Divine animating spirit, bless all people. Embrace us with your abundant grace for working together to preserve the planet. We pray for your wisdom, sympathy and creativity to take meaningful actions towards a shared vision for the common good of all creation. In all the holy names of God we pray. Amen. Amen.